And Ivan LaCroix, we are live yeah. on location. On location in uh, rainy Omaha. We actually had thunderstorms a few minutes ago. But uh, sorry, we had a little uh, internet connection issue. We got that fixed, probably because of the thunderstorms we were having. And now we are live. Today, I'm going to be washing, decontaminating, polishing, and putting ceramic gloss on this beautiful little mini behind us. So uh, just thought we'd do it uh, as a quick live to answer your questions. So Nick will be moderating. He'll be putting your questions up. He'll be answering a lot of them. And if it has to come to me, then I'll be answering the question. But I'm going to get started washing this car. Ivan, is this one where you want me to go through every single question like our other Q&As? Because we already have about 20 of them from when folks were waiting. And I want to make sure. If you can, sure. yep. Yep. Get to as many questions as you can. All right. That's the goal. That's what I'm going to be doing yep. here from Utah as Ivan works works away in Omaha. What are you doing, Ivan? So first, I'm putting rinseless wash all over the vehicle. Uh, Sylvie, if you want to get some B, show them how that it's actually dirty because, you know, a lot of people uh, think we only clean clean cars here. Okay. Optical Clarity Detailing says, hope everyone's having a good day. I had a question about the new C6 ceramic coating. Is this above the roar coating that's on Pan the Organizer's car? Thank you. Definitely. Yeah, 100%. Michael Kaufman says landscape mode today. We got you, Michael. We got you. Yeah, we got it figured out today, Michael. So. Um, Michael Kaufman asks, how's the warehouse coming along? The warehouse, they are sinking inventory as we speak, which is a great thing. Once that inventory is synchronized, we'll be good to go. Thank you, everybody, for your patience, by the way. We yes. don't like this any more than you do. Um, no. But it's one of those when you do it right... It'll be worth it from here on out. Exactly. Ryan says, any guess on how long it will take to wash, decontaminate, and polish, Ivan? Uh, probably an hour to 90 minutes, depending on how many questions I answer and fun stuff like that. Tell them what you're doing. Is it a little all clean with the incredible suds in there? Yeah, so all clean 15 to 1 with incredible suds. And uh, we pre-sprayed a bit of iron remover on the wheels because they were really, really bad. They were actually uh, sort of a golden color when we started. So we did one round of that just because we could. And we're testing, uh, we're actually testing a new iron remover. So we want always, to let it sit, sit on the wheels for a good amount of time. We're always testing new products, right? Exactly. Um, Sebastian Martinez says, how much is C6? If you have to ask, no, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, no, for the, you have to be a, an authorized installer to, to have the pricing. A lot of folks are asking about the, is it hydro light, right? Yeah. So hydro light that we can give you pricing. It's two ninety nine. Uh, we should have it in, in about a week and a half to two weeks. Ryan L says C6 pricing is for installer only. Yep. C6 hydro light will be available soon to consumers. Who is Ryan L Ivan? Ryan Loeffler. He is dirt glands auto spa in Beautiful Newark, Delaware, uh, very close to Maryland. But yeah, great guy. Uh, he's uh, been detailing for a long time. A dedicated car nut freak, however you want to look at it. Now, Just was a, his the Challenger that you guy. coded on the Challenger yeah. 170? Yeah, so uh, yeah, exactly. pronounce his name, Ivan. Yves Saint-Jacques? Yves Saint-Jacques. Yves Saint-Jacques says on the Challenger 170, was it C6 Hydro Light or the Pro version? That was the pro version. There you go. Okay, and then folks are answering that question. Yeah, Ryan's answering that. Demon was hydro pro version. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, Crypto Flyer says, anyone out there doing coatings on airplanes? I guess the question, Ivan, is can C6 be applied to airplanes? Yeah, and DIY coatings can be applied to airplanes as well. Uh, airplane coatings, you know, there's nothing specific. The Some companies will say they're Boeing approved. Uh Honestly, you don't need to be Boeing approved for one second. Boeing approval just means that they put it on a test piece and make sure that it doesn't damage the airframe. It doesn't mean it's any better than any other coat. So that's what Boeing approval is. And it's about a $20,000 investment to get that Boeing approval. But in reality, it doesn't mean much. Mike Zhu Panchik says two DIY locations. No, Mike, just uh, this is me at home in Utah. Ivan is still in Omaha, so that's how that's working out. Daryl Quinn says, Rinse this wash is a game changer. Daryl, I feel the same way. 
Uh, Super Auto 2K says North Georgia checking in. What's Good. up, everybody? Uh, Lawyer Detailing says hello, guys, all as well. Uh, there were some intro hellos that I missed, so don't feel bad. I saw everyone. I just was trying to catch us all up. Uh, Umberto says uh, Rinsus has been a game changer for two decades. Yep. Philippe says hello, everyone, from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Excellent. Excellent. Ryan L. says Nick needs a new background pick. Yes, this is the background from our old shop, so a little nostalgic for yeah, our, yeah, yeah. our humble beginnings. Uh, Krishan says hello from Bowmanville, Ontario. Good. In Focus Photography says, can't wait to see what it's like rinseless washing with a keg sprayer once my parts come in to put it together. Yeah, we get ours from Scott Graves, and they've been excellent. Yeah, Scott does a great job building them. I think he's actually working on a do-it-yourself kit as well. Uh, so people will be able to build their own, just provide their own kit, and he'll provide all the little parts that go with it. Uh, Chelsea, on attention to details, did a good description of his uh, keg as well about a month ago so check that one out when are you going to be at uh, toc is what uh krishan's asking ivan uh early april date has yet to be determined but we should be locking that down a little later this week and you've got the green wheel and body brush that's available at uh, diydetail.com fantastic for wheel faces and tires yeah and this is the first i've noticed these wheels are actually blue uh, they were really bad when it got here. So we couldn't have told they looked black, but now that they're clean, they're blue. So really cool. Greg Siebold says, please order tons of the hydro light coating. That's going to be the C6 consumer version available. I believe on DIY detail and C6, correct, Ivan? Definitely. It's going to be on both DIY and C6. So now that I've got the, the mini basically washed down or primed with the rinseless wash, I have rinseless wash in my bucket here with the cart. And I'm just going to start washing. Oh, I love the sound of rinseless wash in the morning. Although it's probably only the morning in California right now. Because it's the afternoon. Yeah. All right, Greg Siebold says, when will the red pads be back in stock? Uh, if everything goes well, most things should be back in stock this week. Fingers crossed, everybody. We want them in stock as, as badly as you do. Right. Uh, Super Auto 2K says, picked up a Hercules Rotary, my first at Harbor Freight over the weekend. Excellent. It comes with a 7-inch backing plate. What size right. backing plate and DIY red jeweling pad does Ivan recommend getting for it? 6-inch. Unless you have a good inventory of 5-inch pads for your previous polisher, then get 5-inch. There's no need to buy new pads and uh, all that fun stuff. So if you have a, a good selection of 5-inch pads, go with that. Boo Boo Cushion 30 says, let's go. A lot of hellos. Uh, what's up, Sebastian Martinez? Hey, Mike. Um, a little inspiration here. Hi, guys. I'm new to this. I'm HGE Mobile Detailing from Norwich, Connecticut. Really nice videos. My inspiration. Oh, thank you. Uh, David DE says, I just bought the A3 year stack. How far behind the C6? So he might be wondering, like, how lesser is this compared to any of the C6 coatings, Ivan? Do you want to address that? Yeah, the A3 stack is spectacular. Uh, there's no, you know, actually all the coatings are really good. There's no bad choice. The hydro will just give you a little better hydrophobics than the A3 stack. And you're putting one coating on instead of two. So for a professional detailer or, a, you know, a prosumer, that makes a little more sense to just do one coating instead of two. Hydro light, will it come in 30 mil or 50 mil bottles? 30 milliliters. Wait, Cars with Keith says, Ivan, don't get on the Boeing list. Might not make up tomorrow. JK. <laughs> uh, they're what? having issues these days, aren't they? Um, with a, a few planes. So. Crypto Flyers says, ceramic coating airplanes, huge job. Like doing 10 cars at once. Most airplanes don't have clear coat. Would you still do iron remover, water spot remover, polish, then coat? Uh, iron remover... Yes, a water spot remover, probably not necessary. And as far as it goes with the, um, the polishing, the least amount of polishing you do, the better it's going to be. Because polishing is sort of counterintuitive when it comes to airplane. As you mentioned, the, you know, the paint is extremely thin on those. So you don't have a lot of room to play with. People might be blown away by that. 
no pun intended, just the fact that like these are so expensive. Why would the paint be thin? Wait. Oh. I love your one-word answers. They make me think. The wait. Yeah. I get it. Uh, Sebastian asks, when is Hydro Light out? You mentioned that a couple weeks, hopefully. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it's, it's on order uh, from the lab. And basically, to build a coating uh, with the reactive blending technology that we have, takes at least a week. Someone is asking about um, what what wheel brush you use. And I am uh, actually went out of this little window to put a link in the description. Uh, so in the comments, uh, someone asked what brush we use. And I just put the wheel and body brush link. He said, my brush scratches the paint. Yeah. Uh, so basically, if your brush is scratching the paint, discontinue the use of it. And also, it could be the lubrication you're using that's not providing sufficient lubrication for the brush. Crypto Flyer with another question, talking about detailing airplanes and ceramic coating them, asking you, Ivan, can you just get by with App, which is the adhesion promoter polish from C6? Folks may not have heard about that. Yes. Right? We haven't even introduced it on this live stream, and a lot of folks are new. So can you yeah. just get by with the adhesion promoter polish and C6 Hydro? Definitely. For a plane, that is great because now – if you have very, very little abrasive, the less abrasive you have on the plane, the better it is. You think paint is thin on cars these days? Planes have been way ahead of cars in that respect for a long time. Excelsior Auto Detailing, I believe Andrew. Yes. Someone you know very well says, congrats on your success, gentlemen. How's the new warehouse? Spectacular. And look at this. Just uh, let me go over the rocker panel one more time. Let's get oh, the sponge this. legitimately dirty here. And and can you go through the science of this and the magic? The visual is the magic. So maybe right. show them first and then explain what's about to happen. So we have a dirty sponge. We touch it to the surface. We lift it. We squeeze. We now have a clean sponge. Basically, what we're doing is as you touch the sponge to the surface, it is depositing the dirt into the bucket leaving you with a clean wash media because that's what we're really after is a clean wash media. So many people ask questions about rinseless wash. Is it surfactant based? Is it polymer based? Does it, oh. you know, does it, does it smell like this? Does it act like that? And I'm like, when you put your sponge in the bucket and it comes up clean, what do you think that means for the safety of this, you know, of this on your paint? It means yeah. it's safe. You know, that's the way I look at it. I'm like, the proof is in the visual. You have a yeah. clean sponge once you dunk it in the bucket. This stuff works. That's I'd rather I have a clean sponge than a clean bucket, personally. Exactly. Exactly. All right. As I am often guilty of, I'm probably behind on questions. So we're going to get to this. Uh, Cameron says, is the stack safe to put on vinyl wrap, Ivan? Yes, it is. Perfect shine of Jack says, most marine coatings on boats show a lot of oxidation in two years here in Florida. What can we expect from C6 Marine? C6 Marine has a, uh, excuse the pun here, but a boatload of UV inhibitors in it. And that's the problem with most, U or most uh, marine, you know, quote unquote marine coatings, is they have labeled engineered an automotive coating to be a marine coating. And they're two very different sources. Gel coat and paint are two very different sources. Yes, they're both plastic, but they're not, uh, they're not always compatible that way. So is the issue water spots on marine coatings or no, like, is it oxidation? The gel coat oxidizes. The other thing is a lot of people uh, on gel coat are not preparing it properly for a coating. Polishing is not enough. You need to first remove the oxidation. And the best tool we have for that is actually all clean, foamed onto the surface, and then a non-scuffed dish pad to act somewhat like the perforated synthetic decontamination towel, but on gel coat instead of paint. And that's going to remove that loose oxidation. All right, Ivan, you're washing and decontaminating, and we're going to get to more comments here. Daryl Quinn says, can't wait for the restock, waiting to get the green wheel and body brush and ceramic coating from Into Detailing. That's Excellent. in the UK, correct? Yeah, into detailing. Uh, Imran is the owner there, does a great job. Everyone loves him for a reason. And Daryl's up there in Northern Ireland, so thanks, Daryl. Uh, Franco oh. says, hope you're having a great day. Always. Uh, 
Taylor says, Taylor Vavra Peacock says, do you ever stop through Carzilla in Calgary? Uh, very rarely. I've been there once, actually. And great people. Uh, but Calgary is sort of out of my normal routine of where I go. So, But I'm sure I will make it there in not too long. You, you're not as much a, a plane traveler as you are a uh, you know former uh, tour bus uh, right. traveler. And you're actually now that you have a, a, a what do you call it passport now, Nick. You're actually closer to Carzilla than I am. I've never been to Canada, so I think a trip to Canada is in the future, no doubt. Yeah. Um, okay, Excelsior Auto Detailing says, "Where'd you get that cart with a bucket in it?" We actually made those, Andrew, from a bunch of Harbor Freight runs. We did a video about this, so I hate to give it away. Ivan, what else do you want to say about it? You did some fabricating on your own as well. A little bit, yeah. But yeah, very simple, Andrew. Uh, in your case, you can go to Princess Auto. All the parts are there. Ryan L. says the wheels are Union Jacks, even though it's a German car. Yeah. Uh, you know, they pretend it's a... Uh, actually, aren't, aren't these made in Mexico now? But it's a BMW disguised as a, uh, a British car and owned by a Chinese company. No, I don't know who owns BMW these days, if it's still German owned or not, but a lot of these companies are changing hands uh, like crazy these days. So, In Focus Photography says, hope those smaller drying blankets are a thing sooner than later. So do I, so do I. The Breakfast Lover says, what's better at loosening traffic film? Uh, by the way, we have grown so quickly that there are a lot of things that we want to do, but we're still focusing on like, making the big thing the big thing, right? Which is making sure these are quality products and that you and I are delivering on the education side. The logistics, the R&D, the coming out with the new products, like we have to be very intentional with that. So we're not just trying to do everything at once. So yes, there are a few towels that we want to get restocked and a few products that people are asking about. Trust us, we're aware of it all and we're doing everything we can to be awesome at everything. Right. And, you know, one of the limitations we had before was the warehouse. Yep. Physically, we outgrew the warehouse. Uh, they had no more space. So now with the new warehouse, we've got about 150,000 square feet available to us, meaning that we'll do a great job in getting more products, getting more stuff in gallons. Um, and, you know, some of the accessories that we didn't have space for before, we'll have space for now. I've been not forgetting to decontaminate the glass. That's a big part of the process. I got to get to these questions though. What's better at yeah. loosening traffic film, rinseless wash or incredible side? That's from the breakfast lover. So if you're wanting to do a touchless <clears throat> pre-soak, uh, in that case, uh, all clean, diluted 15 to one, put it in your foam cannon at that dilution, but straight in your foam cannon. And you will have a great pre-soak if that's, that's what you're looking for. Now, as far as remo actually removing traffic film at the standard wash ratio, both incredible suds and rinse this wash do a spectacular job. I would agree. I think it just depends on what you have around, what you're used to using, what you like using. They both are excellent. Um, right. Pick the method, not the product. Okay. Owen Samuel says, hi from Atlanta. I'm new DIYer, but a lifetime learner. Wanted to thank you guys for your great teaching and products. Game changer. And I just got my cake from Scott Graves. Great. Excellent. Christopher Atkinson writes, can your rinseless wash double as a contact list to break down heavily soiled cars? Looking for something that will have low runoff. Garage is small, doesn't have slope or drain. So he wants it all, Ivan. Yeah. And yes, you can use rinseless wash like Sylvie is doing now. She's spreading it on the surface because it's starting to dry a little bit. So we're adding that and you can use that as a pre-soak. So is the rinseless uh, being applied to areas that already have iron remover just to keep everything uh, moist no, or is she uh, doing that ahead of you? Ahead of me. So she that just, makes sense. Yeah, just went ahead because the, the back panels here were getting a little dry. So Summer says Ryan L. Mini is a British brand in history and heritage currently owned by BMW. Yeah. He says, I know, just strange. I do have an original Mini 61. Uh, Auto Detailing Therapy says, hello and happy Monday to you both. Yeah, happy Monday. Ivan actually texted me this morning. He's like, do you want to do a live stream? I was like, let's go. Let's do this. Yeah. Uh, Ivan, what compelled you to want to do this live stream? Is it that so many people ask questions and you love answering them? Is it you felt like 
watching a mini today on the internet. Like, tell me what went through your mind. Well, you know, producing a video where I'm alone in it uh, isn't always, you know, the best, uh, best content. And at the same time, we have this mini here that uh, our good friends at Audi of Omaha uh, lent us to get back because we brought two cars back the other day and we just needed another car. And they said, do whatever you want with it. So I thought, well, this would be a good opportunity to show people how actually quick it is to wash, decontaminate, polish, and put ceramic gloss on your vehicle. Yeah, you already washed this thing, and now you're doing the decon process, and uh, we didn't start on time, so it's only been 20 minutes. So you're really cranking on this. I want to get to more questions, though. Minty Premium Detail says, what's up, guys? Christopher Atkinson says, are your wash products really biodegradable? Yes. They sure are. And now we're ready to rinse off the vehicle. So you might get a bit of noise on my end. Okay. I don't know if you can mute me, Nick, here. But... Let, me, uh, let me work on that. I'm going to mute you. Okay, stand by. So I've got Ivan muted. Uh, Owen Samuel says, can't wait to try Hydro Light. By the way, this is the new DIY Detail Garage. You've seen snippets of it. We've got sort of a little bit old and new. That new wall um, with DIY Detail on it, we, we put that up. But you can see the wall to the right there. Very much sort of the heritage of the sports car garage in Omaha, Nebraska. It was a mechanic shop for decades. Franco says, I know it's been talked about before, but that detail cart is killer. It's the Swiss Army knife of carts. Yeah. Uh, we did a whole YouTube video on it that still has yet to be edited. Uh, should be kind of fun. Um, it was a competition between me and Ivan on who could build the best cart. He didn't even, yeah, it wasn't even close. <laughs> it was like, uh, it wasn't even close. All right. David B says, when will the C6 website login be activated again for pro installers? Let me put Ivan off mute here. Ivan, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Hopefully later today. Hopefully later today. All right, you're back on mute again, Ivan. When will the C6 website be active again for Pro Installers? Hopefully later today. Oh, this is a good question. Um, Parth says, hey, Nick, Ivan, any chance DIY detail is coming to, and I'll put you off mute here, is coming to Amazon for Canada? Because we're yes. on Amazon in the U.S. Right. Uh, once we get everything settled with Amazon U.S., we will be going to Amazon in Canada. Can you explain but, to the people what the holdup is on Amazon having our full lineup? Because I try to explain it to people, and it, it is quite complicated. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, hoops to go through. Now, you can sell on Amazon. Uh, you know, you can sign up to sell on Amazon, and within a day, you'll be selling on Amazon. That also means that within a day, you'll be very unprofitable, A. And B, uh, your listings won't get much traction. So... We've actually hired a firm that is doing the listings, doing it right, and also working to get us uh, FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon as opposed to FBV, fulfilled by vendor. And the fulfilled by Amazon uh, makes your lives easier. That means Amazon warehouses the product, not us. Ivan, I just automatically adjusted your mic volume really low. I don't know if that's okay. going to work. I'm almost done with the person watching it. All right, folks. I don't know if you can hear this. Maybe that's working. Maybe it's not. I, uh, I I'm, We're trying this remote thing. So we're just trying to get the audio good for everybody in live. We're trying to answer all your questions. So this is another live Q&A brought to you by Ivan LaCroix and yours truly here on the DIY Detail YouTube channel. And by the way, a quick little plug. Every Friday, we have a podcast, a DIY Detail podcast. comes out every Friday. And with all of our YouTube videos, we do a live premiere. Okay, I'm putting your audio back to automatic, Ivan. Going to get to the next question. Yep. <clears throat> Auto Detailing Therapy says, I have a silly question. Will you guys be having a video about how to attract clients or potential customers? My business is only less than a year old and having challenges with how to get customers. It's a, I mean, that's not easy for anybody. So I, I hear your question. No, and that's not really the scope of DIY Detail. Uh, but if you go to the Detailers Business Academy channel, or actually Nick's channel had a couple of business things on it as well. That's Hot Pro Detailing. You'll get more information there. Editing his mic settings. Trying to go low for Ivan. Let me know in the comments. Is his mic going low when I do that? All right. Next question. All right. Congrats on the new house. Are products available for purchase now? I know a lot of products were saying out of stock. We're working on it. We're hoping by the end of the week, everybody, that all of our out-of-stock issues 
are gone. We're reconciling a lot on the back end, getting everything synced up online with shipping and the new warehouse. Like the logistics behind the scenes are monumentally more complicated than you can imagine. But once we make this move, Ivan, we're moved. Yeah, definitely. And we'll be there for many, many years to come. Okay. We have another question here on the live stream. I'm trying to work out Ivan's audio. Did that work? Did anything happen when I went down on that? All right. Krishan says, uh, or Krishan says another question. When will app and other C6 be available at TOC or Carzilla? Sorry if it was answered already. So yeah, TOC will be the official distributor. Uh, now for the app and hydro light, uh, that might be available through Carzilla. We're still working the logistics of that because you know, different companies and different agreements and crossing the border and all that fun stuff. So, and now I'm done with the pressure washer, so we should... Uh... Your audio, I think, is back on automatic and has been for a minute or so. Okay. Uh, I see a phantom squeegee here. I believe that's... Sylvie, wife, yeah. Wife, Sylvie, yes. Yeah. Everyone knows her. She's famous. Uh, okay, next question from Lawyer Detailing. When's the shipping time looking like on the new polisher and rotary? A lot of people pre-ordered it on our website, Ivan. Yeah, so the pre-orders, uh, if everything goes well, this Friday they'll be shipping. Uh, and then from there, it's going to be another five or six weeks. So I see your pants there. There we go. There we go. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, w- one more time. On, so I was so distracted by just looking at your pants. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, so when, when are the polishers shipping? The polishers should be shipping, uh, later this week, hopefully Friday, if everything goes well. And then from there, let me try to set this up so it doesn't fall on the ground. There we go. Then uh, from one, there, oh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, it'll be another six or seven weeks, maybe eight, before we get the next batch in. Yeah, we've so already. We weren't, we weren't expecting to sell the first batch so quickly. Exactly. Uh, Juan Carlos Guillen says, uh, Guillen says, greetings from Salt Lake City, Utah, where it is bipolar weather constantly. As I know, I'm in Utah as well. Uh, Perfect yeah. Shana Jax, he was the one asking about the marine coating earlier. Uh, okay, I get it. Boatload of UV inhibitors. Can we say four years of little to no oxidation? Yeah. Now, again, oxidation on marine is 100% dependent on the prep. And if a boat was previously oxidized, there's a good chance it's going to oxidize again, even with a coating on it. But if it's a brand new boat, you have got a long time before that will start oxidizing. Christopher's wondering, what is Ivan applying right now? I'm guessing that was from 10 minutes ago since I'm behind on questions. So that was your yeah. uh, perfect iron synthetic remover. decontamination towel with iron remover. One spray on the panel, one spray on the towel, deposit yeah. the towel where you put it on the panel. And you were just doing no pressure until it was smooth under the touch, yeah? Exactly. All right, we're back to the aviation guy, Crypto Flyer. Can you ceramic coat solar panels for ease of keeping clean? Would the UV protectant in the coating degrade the panel performance? No, the coating itself will degrade the panel performance. So for solar panels, you do not want any beading whatsoever. You want them to be 100% hydrophilic. Okay, and you have solar uh, panels on the bus, so you'd know. Yeah, and we're actually working on a solar panel coating. Uh, I'll be testing it on the bus in the next couple days. So, Of course we are. Yeah. Of course we are. It's actually a need. You know, there's a lot of people that have solar panels and they're up there waxing them or putting stuff on, making them hydrophobic. When in reality, that is decreasing the performance. Bill Kurtz is asking, whatever happened to your wash mitts? Are they coming back? He may be referring to that, like uh, that purple, super soft wash mitt that we started with. I loved those. I thought they were a tough sell with the color purple. But actually, once people got them, they realized how soft they were, and they, they loved them too. Uh, yeah. We went out on those. We ran out of stock. I don't believe we reordered them from Well, the, the manufacturer, Korea. yeah, the manufacturer actually quit making them. So That's a sad day. Yeah, and we would have to buy a, a rather large quantity uh, for them to you know, start that production up again. Folks asking, uh, are the drip catcher, are those coming back? They're on their way back. They won't be green anymore, though. They'll be gray, but they'll still have the great magnets in them and the nice thickness to them. So, What was the square footage of the old warehouse, Michael Kaufman asks? Uh, about 3,000 square feet. 
And then uh, a question. Does Ivan know a place in Canada to get that wheel cart? I know he got it at Harbor Freight, but they don't ship to Canada. Princess Auto. All right. Auto Detailing Therapy says growth is always great. LOL. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Okay. Neil Walker says, will the new drying aid mist be a similar product to bead maker? Not at all. So mist is not designed to provide much in terms of protection, but it is designed primarily as a drying lubricant. So that is the way we're looking at it. It's a drying lubricant because with C6 ceramics, you don't need any more hydrophobics. You've got more than you can handle with the coating itself. Super Auto 2K is asking a question, but I don't know if there's full context. What is Ivan's thoughts on the subject I brought up on your podcast with Eddie? I remember the, the podcast. Chemical manufacturer comments regarding rinseless and respected detailers' comments regarding clay towel. I think it might be just that maybe they don't believe rinseless works or that a clay towel always mars or scratches. Yeah, so there's a lot of a lot of different methods, a lot of different ways of doing things. And in reality, as long as you're not scratching the paint, it's not wrong. Now, what we try to do is find the most efficient and safe methods for you. And that's what we're doing. And if someone says that a clay towel automatically mars paint as soon as it touches paint, come here for a second. Now, this comes from a dealership. It's been driven through car washes. But do you see marring here? I see a window. I don't see paint, so I don't know. Sylvie, we need... We need a little bit up. That paint's right. Yep. Okay. I see so, some scratches. You haven't polished yet, though. That's good. No, there's scratches there. But marring from a clay bar would look like the whole thing was sanded. And there's scratches, but the paint itself isn't marred. Agreed. Because the way the perforated synthetic decontamination towel works, it simply does not mar paint. Oh, I like that blue with the... <laughs> A flake in it, a flake, yeah, that's yeah, gonna it's pop. Metallic. Yeah, it's gonna pop. Uh, okay, John from C6 Ceramics says, Hey guys, my flight's about to take off back to Las Vegas, but want to say hello. I bet Ivan's happy he can turn the heat back up in the shop. Yes, sir. Wait, you let him get you to turn the heat down? No, no, I didn't turn the heat down. I was gonna say, you never turn John, the heat down. Whatever, John, John was complaining about the you know, the really uh, tropical 60 degrees in here. It's always hot in the it's shop. Very hot here. John, you will just learn. You don't complain about it. You just let it ride. It's so, like, what's the point? You know, if you need it, that temperature, it'll end up that temperature. And I'm only wearing three layers right now. So exactly. Yeah. Uh, David D says, I've seen you using a blower to dry, but you say it's better to use a towel. Which are the always. best at soaking up water? I, I David, I, I can take this for a second. What I've been saying is don't use a leaf blower solely because that'll leave sort of the minerals still on the paint. You can use the leaf blower or the master blaster or the big boy or whatever car dryer you have to get a lot of those drops out of the seams and cracks and crevices, but you do want to do a towel dry at the end. Ivan, you can, you can uh, take it from there, but that's sort of my take on it. Yeah, actually, it's the other way around. Do a towel dry first and then blow your seams. Basically, what you're doing when you're blowing the water across the surface is you're not only removing the water, you're actually drying the water on the surface. And that dried water on the surface is, you know, uh, affecting your hydrophobics negatively. So you want to dry, you don't even want to push anything across with air first. No. Even though when you do blow everything out at the end, it's going to splash water droplets everywhere that you've already dried. Right. But then you just follow with a towel. I okay. prefer to use compressed air over those blowers because then I can target it and I can have the compressed air in one hand and a towel in the other, and I'm blowing the water into my towel. Much more efficient. So but you not towel, everyone, you towel not dry first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you towel dry first, and then you take the towel in front of wherever your air source is coming from, and you just kind of like blow the air into the towel as you go through the cracks. Correct. Yeah. See, this is what everyone's tuning in for: the magic, the magic moments of wisdom. Maybe that's the one thing you learned today. It's the one thing I learned. I learned a lot. Learn about mini and BM. Okay, we're about to polish, so it's getting real. Uh, Daryl is saying uh, that we answer every comment. Holy cow. All right. We try to answer every comment. Hold on. I got to turn that. I got to turn this mic off. How do I turn this off? There we yeah, go. that We're 25 back. millimeter is going to be. Uh, yeah, he loves about the DIY teams. They answer every comment, every question, and happily do so. Such dedication, superb. Thank you. 
Uh, King Rocket says, will C6 have a gloss light version available to consumers or just hydro light? Just hydro light. Just hydro light. All right, guys. So I've muted Ivan's mic just for your eardrums. I don't know how this is going to go, but for now, uh, just so Ivan can hear me, when you're done with your polishing pass, uh, I'll kick it back to you. But just watch Ivan's polisher here. He's got one spray of the gold standard polish, lightly damp pad, and... As always, starting top top to bottom. Uh, David says, Nick, we need you here for the videos. Ivan is so task-focused, he'd probably just whip around the car without saying a word. Yeah, I mean, Ivan gets it done. Like, this man gets it done. And uh, that's what we love about him. When I'm really in getting it done mode, though, I can't even talk. I, always, I often find it t- difficult to do two things at once. So I appreciate Ivan. Yeah. Okay, we're talking about that, that cart challenge. Nick's cart was uh, end table duct tape to a skateboard. Ivan basically built me his cart. So he said, Sylvie sent me a photo last night of my yellow cart, and it looks exactly like Ivan. So that was nice of them. Super Auto 2K says, McKee sells a cart like that called the Carolina cart. You can make one way cheaper, though. My research leads me to think that a three-level cart is better to use than a two-level, Ivan. What do you think about that? Uh, personally, I like the, uh, the drawers that we have in these carts uh, because it keeps things secure. It keeps things uh, you know, dust-free and all of that. So we have you know, our polishing pads in here. We have the towels in there. We have our used towels there. We have our ceramic coatings and brushes in here. And then all the products up here. One question. Uh, what's the lifetime for a polishing gold, a gold standard waffle pad, Ivan? Uh, if you maintain it properly and you use it like we do, it's roughly about 10 vehicles. All right, I'm putting Ivan back on mute. And and the way we use it is we use just one pad. Uh, Benoit, I believe your name is. Uh, I could be mispronouncing it. We use just one pad with one spray of the gold standard polish. And Ivan, you're muted. I know you probably want to say that I mispronounced his name, so I apologize. Um, but yeah, we use that lightly damp pad, and, and this is how we polish. I think Ivan's probably on no greater than speed two. Thumbs up or down, Ivan? He's on speed one. Yeah, on our dual action... <laughs> You could polish on speed one. Like I've, not, I I used to like to polish on high speeds. I don't go over above three on this thing. Between two and three is a sweet spot. So we teach you to, you know, compound with our dual action and finish with the rotary. In this case, we're just doing a one step with our dual action. But when we teach you to cut with a dual action and it's twenty five millimeters, you can really cut. The pad's not stalling. You're between speed two and three. Life is good. Everything is working the way that we say it's going to work. Um, and that Ivan can chime in when he's done with his polishing section is partially why we came out with polishers. Like, we have a system. But but one variable that would consistently happen is people would ask us for advice. They'd have the pad. They might even get the pad washer. They'd have our polish. But they're using one of, you know, 15 different polishers. And it's... Um, Ivan's on the window, so I think he's almost done. And you can kind of make the polish stretch there at the end, right, Ivan, on a couple windows? Yep. I've got you off-muted now, so... Okay, yeah. Uh, almost done here. Going to get this A pillar. Okay. But I was talking about, you know, part of the reason we came out with polishers is to help reduce the variables and, like, help people. It's a system. It works very well with the system yeah. as we've designed it. So I'm on speed one and doing all these funny shapes on this mirror, and I haven't installed the pad yet. So. Well, surely you need a one-inch polisher for those tight sections, right, Ivan? Uh, no. <laughs> Ivan hates the one-inch polishers. He rocks a six-inch pad all day, every day. Uh, Taylor says, DIYs help me gaining tons of confidence in polishing and coating. I owe that to you guys. Ivan, walk us through the process. Looks like you're not going to let all the polish sit on the paint till the end. You're going to finish this section. Yep. So just going... Oh, drive towel. Sorry. Uh, so a bit of ceramic gloss. And I'm just doing section by section. That way I know where I've been. And when I'm done a section, I'm done a section. I can move the cart and keep going forward. Now we're using a rinseless stamp and towel to remove the excess polish because now I can remove the excess polish without applying any pressure to the towel. And one thing I'm noticing too is you can almost let the rinseless sit on there for a little bit longer so it's not completely soppy and wet. Does that help letting oxygen... And Mother Nature, like, dry some of it for you first? Yeah, so the towels that we currently have, uh, the gentleman that helps us in purchasing with towels, let's just say he's a fan of really, really thick towels. And 
These towels, uh, they hold a lot of moisture no matter how you wring them out. So you can see that back window is still sopping wet. Even though I've with rinseless this, wash, because you put this in rinseless wash. wash. Yeah. Yep, yep. Oh, wow. It is still so wet, Ivan. So yeah. Nick would, Nick, my, me, I would be yeah. like hammering away at that window trying to dry it with a spray of ceramic gloss in my dry towel. And what you told me, that's why I kind of played dumb. I was like, does it help to wait? Is just let, let it air dry a little bit first. Yeah, let the nature run its course. So let me apply a bit of ceramic gloss on here. Um, do we sell the pressure washer nozzle Ivan is using? No, we don't. Was that for the hose? I no, well, you know, for the pressure washer, uh, I've never been one to buy these super fancy, expensive nozzles. Right. Go to your local pressure washer store. And, you know, we used to have the, the Kranzler pressure washer that we sold for a little while. No, those are nice. There's nothing wrong with them. But you can get, if you go to a local, like a real pressure washing place where they sell the industrial machines. Right. You can get, you can custom build a pressure washer less expensive than the Kranzler. that will give you two times the performance. But it doesn't look as sexy. It's not as... Uh, how can I put it? Uh, you know, it doesn't make a fancy noise like that every five minutes, but it also doesn't. Ivan loves the Kranzler. No, he has mixed feelings. No, it's a great machine. There's nothing wrong with it, but what you're getting for the money is convenience and a look. Whereas if you go to your local pressure washer supplier, they're going to provide you with a solution perfectly tailored to you and that's serviceable locally. They have all I've, the parts for it, etc. Ivan, we're in Q and A mode. I, yeah. I probably led you astray, but we're waiting. So, Dreams okay. on Wheels says his kneeling creeper is the best, so they're a fan of your kneeling creeper. Um, Chris says, can you use any iron remover with your clay towel? No. Chris Ciavellas. No, you can't. Uh, not every iron remover is compatible with our clay towel in any way, shape, or form. It's not the issue that it would make the towel deteriorate so much as it may not and we can't know because we haven't tested them all we can't tell you if it's going to be proper lubrication for the towel yeah the lubrication is the big part of it now yes it can degrade the towel as well and i'm, I'm about to go loud so questions are on you nick all right i got you i got you we're gonna we're gonna mute ivan real quick um jack's auto detailing services hi jack from south africa any future plans for diy detail to be available in south africa uh ivan does oversee our international distribution but i will say we have a link to our international distributors uh, on the DIY Detail website. If we're not in your country, ask your favorite distributor to carry us by name. That tends to work. If they hear someone ask for DIY Detail enough times, they'll be like, hmm, maybe I should reach out. And so that's a way that we can get into your country. So please reach out to us. We're always obviously wanting to consider or explore opportunities. Uh, and you can see Ivan, he's got his creeper there and he's on speed one on the polisher. You notice he's also polishing trim. If you're going to polish trim with gold standard polish, it's safe. It's a dust-free polish. We love it for that. But use the foam pad. We don't want you seeing, you know, seeing you, you know, hammering down on uh, on the wool pad on trim. It's just safer if you're going to do this. Uh, go ahead and do a light polish over the trim with our yellow gold standard waffle pad. Uh, Ginger Badger, I haven't even read these questions, so they're just coming up. If I'm cutting with a Milwaukee Fuel Rotary, what speed would you recommend? 1200 and polishing at 800. So Ginger and Ivan, if he wants to stop or whatever, he can. But the way that we teach polishing is speed one, the lowest RPMs it'll go. So if it's at 800, that's at 800. Our rotary is at 600. We don't teach to cut with a rotary. We teach to polish, to finish polish with a rotary on speed one with our rotary jeweling pad. So if you're going to cut, Ivan, you know people like to cut with a rotary, whether you tell them to or not. Still cutting on speed one, right? You could do a thumbs up. Absolutely. I haven't spoken about this at length, but we teach to finish with a rotary polisher, and, and we're not crazy. A lot of people are trying it now and saying that they, they believe it. So... Uh, it does work. It's amazing. Alex says, if I don't want to ceramic coat because I don't want to polish the paint yet, what's the recommended paint protection? A uh, great way is just ceramic gloss or quick bead. So wash, decontaminate like Ivan did in this video with the decon towel and iron remover, and then just use ceramic gloss as a drying aid perhaps. Maybe you want to do what Ivan did with the wheels. Quick beads is great on the wheels. You just spray it on wet paint, rinse off quickly, get the tight water beads and the slickness. Uh, you can also use quick beads on paint. So one of those two, super easy way if you're not interested in a ceramic coating. Sam Squatch says, oh, yeah, recommend we start in a small area, see how much lubrication the iron remover gives. If it's good enough to get you through, by all means. That's how you would test someone else's iron remover with our decon towel. 
Sam Squatch on our customer service team. So uh, thanks, Sam. Michael Kaufman. Let's, oh, I think we've got Ivan off mute. Hold on. You there, Ivan? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Michael Kaufman says, I need more information on the solar panel coating. Work in renewable energy and customers might be interested if it helps the snow slide off quicker. Yeah, it's going to help the snow slide off quicker. It's extremely hydrophilic. So if your panel, let's say, is on a 5 or 10 degree angle, it's going to absorb the, well, the water is going to sheet off. And this is something that detailers often get confused. They say, oh, I want something that sheets, so I want something that's hydrophilic. Sheeting is still hydrophobic. Hydrophilic means that the product is literally, or the water is literally sitting there until it evaporates. And okay. for, for a solar panel, that's almost what we want. So it's somewhat hydrophobic in the sense that the water is going to sheet off, but very, very slowly. And the reason we want it to be slow is when it's slow like that, let me move my cord here. When it's slow like that, what it does is it takes the dirt away with it. So you don't want quick sheeting like we want with a traditional ceramic coating. You want it to sheet very, very slowly. So the water has time to emulsify the dirt or break it down because water is a solvent. And at the same time, you know, take that dirt with it. Ivan, we're less than an hour into this video and you've already washed, deconned, polished and protected. I mean, a good, you've already polished and protected a few panels. So less than an hour, folks, this is happening in real time. Yeah. Uh, Krishan says, so I used Rinso's wash and the legacy sponge on my brother-in-law's Dodge Ram yesterday. He was blown away. He never thought it was possible to clean without a hose or a pressure washer. I'm going to mute Ivan. Um, Neil says there would not be the industry wide push for rinseless if DIY had not come out with the rinseless wash. Thank you, Neil. I appreciate that coming from you. I didn't say that, but I appreciate you hearing it. Um, can we do wax polish instead of clay bar? So I'm not sure quite what the question is. I know that Ivan mentions in different countries, polish can mean different things, but the way that we teach this is you could wash your car and you could use our decontamination towel. We have a towel, not a clay bar. And that will help to remove above surface contaminants from the paint. It'll be smoother. It'll have a brighter color. And then you could put something on like ceramic gloss. Um, but, you know, if you want to polish and you're not going to decontaminate first, we don't advise it. Some people out there do it, but you're going to, it's going to interfere with the polishing process. So if you're going to polish, it's best to use the decontamination towel. Okay. We don't, you have a clay bar uh, in our line. Chris says, thanks. I really want to use the DIY iron remover as I use all exterior products from DIY. Thanks, Chris. Ooh, WXN Anton says, when will we get a complete garage tour? Well, we've done a garage tour in the past. I don't think it's impossible by any means to do it here. There is work being done on the garage, but maybe when Ivan's done, he can give us a quick walk around the new DIY detail garage in Omaha. It's a pretty sweet place. Um, Neil says, will DIY sell this awesome detailing car? I mean, we get it from Harbor Freight, so I don't think so. But maybe when we put the video out on how to use it, we'll put the links to all the products in there and y'all can build it yourself. Uh, Ryan L says, Nick saw the video of your last day on air. Care to share about your past life pre-detailer? Yeah, so I was a TV news reporter and anchor for about 14 years. I was in Clarksburg, West Virginia, and then South Bend, Indiana, uh, Denver, Colorado, Seattle, and then spent six years on air in Salt Lake and started a mobile detailing business as I was doing that job, fell in love with it, started making YouTube videos about detailing cars, connected with Ivan in that way, and then he did a training and you know we did more content together and things were kind of working behind the scenes and the opportunity came up to start this company. So decided to take the plunge, take a risk. And um, it's been going great so far. So Ivan, when you're done polishing, I'll unmute you, but you're still muted, sir. Uh, Daryl Quinn says, do you notice when using the barrel brush and you go to take it out to another section, you get splashback from the bristles? Yes, Daryl. That happens to the best of us. Any tips to prevent it? I'd like to hear Ivan on this because my tip is just to stay the heck out of the way. Uh, hold on. Ivan, you're unmuted now. Any tips to prevent the splashback from the wheelbarrow brush, from the bristles? <laughs> yeah, go very, very slowly. Okay. That's about the only, you know, when you're pulling it back, just go slowly so the bristles aren't flying. They're just uh, moving slowly. Ivan on location at the DIY Detail Garage in Omaha. I am at home in Utah with this fancy green screen behind me. Uh, moderating as Ivan does a live 
wash, decon, and polish. I have any description of what you're doing now. I know that's usually what the whole videos are about is describing what you're doing. So I don't want to take yeah. that away. So basically we've polished these two sections and I'm just going over them with a rinse and stamp and towel to remove the polish residue. And once that polish residue is off, I can come back with ceramic gloss and get the whole panel shined up, ready to sell because this is a dealer car. You know, what's so fascinating. And I know I'm taking away from the questions, but doing everything a certain way and having a system has really helped me answer customer service questions. Like when someone is having an issue with polishing, I'll ask them like, what are all the variables? Did they do everything the way, like, is that towel in your hand a short nap towel that has been wrung out after it was dunked in your rinseless wash bucket, right? Like there's so many different variables involved, but if you do it this way, it works. Yeah. You know, I hate to sound like too regimented, but like it actually does work if you follow so, the system. Right. We provide you with a recipe and that recipe is one of success, one that we know works 100% every time. Now, if you're baking a cake and you look around your kitchen, you don't have any flour. You say, oh, well, any white nondescript powder will work. Right. I'll put, you know, I'll put powdered salt or baking or you know, cornstarch in instead of uh, the flour. Your cake's probably not going to end up being too good. And even almond a, flour, even some gluten-free stuff versus the, like, you change it up slightly and it's a slightly different recipe. Right. And that recipe, once you know the recipe and it works, great. And, you know, professional detailers waste a lot of time uh, developing their own little recipes. We're providing you with one that's been tried and true. It's been on, you know, uh, best kitchens and all that, however you want to look at it. It works. Uh, this is a recipe that I've been using for 20 some years in my own detailing businesses. It just simply works. So follow the recipe. You'll be happy. Craig Ricketts says, when will the clay towels be back in stock? Sorry, you probably already answered this question. Soon. Uh, oh, actually, no, those are, they're shipping next week from China. We ordered, I think, uh, five of them. Just five? 5,000, five yeah. 5,000, yeah. We hope to never be out of stock of the decon towels again. We, we ordered 5,000. So once we get everything settled with the new warehouse, uh, since we have much, much more space than we had before. Out of stock situations in the next two or three months should no longer exist in our world. Uh, our warehouse is prepared to have enough inventory for a couple months worth. So unless we go really crazy and you know we explode, we should be okay. Greg Seabold asking for a video on the power washer setup we we're talking about. I've got you on mute, Ivan. Um, oh. Can we turn it around while Ivan's, uh, we got Sylvie. Where is that place? Oh, I'm unmuted. Ivan's muted again. So this is the pressure washer system. That's our Kranzla. That's one of our uh, legacy sponges sitting there. Uh, we used to sell the Kranzla. That season of our, you know, of our, uh, of our life didn't last long. Being a Kranzla distributor was okay, but people have a lot of questions about pressure washers and shipping costs, margins, all those things. Uh, this is a Cox reel. I think we, we might have bought that from Seth's Garage. I'm not even sure. Um, but yeah, that's our Kranzler pressure washer. It's nice. We've got our grit guards there. I don't know where those grit guards came from in the buckets. I know they're not actually... I think they're detail guards. Anyway, so that's what we've got going on over there. That's our that's our pressure washer setup. Here Ivan is on the hood. I think this is a really great visual for folks who have never polished before is to watch Ivan polish on the hood. You can see the backing plate spinning. He's on speed one. No pressure on the machine, obviously, since he's polishing with one hand. Ivan, sometimes we teach polishing sections as big as a microfiber towel, right? Sometimes you do half a hood. So you can chime in if you want, but you're on mute right now, so I guess you can't. When you're done with this polishing section, we can get to why you polish with such a large section. I will say with the gold standard polish and that foam pad, our gold standard waffle, this thing will pretty much run forever. Like you can you can get this polish to work forever. And uh you know, depending on the, yeah, speed one, Ivan's on speed one and look at that backing plate free spinning. Not something you're going to see on a lot of tools. This is a working machine. That's why I love it. It's, it's meant for detailers who are, who are getting it done. Um, and to be put through the paces, right? 
Usually this is where Ivan chimes in. I'll, this is where we do our back and forth, but uh, he's polishing. Uh, Ivan, I'm taking you off mute. Yep. So, so I, 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 I like to describe this, this dual action polisher as one that's meant to be used by detailers, by enthusiasts, but in shops, like meant to be used, maybe accidentally dropped, you know, like um, not encouraging yeah. that, but like these no. are well-built machines. I mean, they don't, yeah. they don't stall on speed one. No, it's not a fragile machine in any way. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I built these tools for me and I had employees and employees tend to break things. Now, to answer the question, why I'm using, why I'm doing such a large section. I'm polishing today, not to correct, I'm polishing to enhance only. And in enhancing, I can go to a larger section if I want to. Now, so if, if the I'm person pol- at home is just like, I just want a quick shine on my car, I'm just going to do half my hood. Yeah. And that's a perfect goal- time for it. Right. And the gold standard goes so far that you can, you can do that. Some other polishes, you'll be a, uh, you know, layered in dust if you tried to do a section this big. Absolutely. Is there a benefit to using five over six inch or is it just preference? Seems like a lot of people on YouTube use five inch. That's from Pete W. Yeah. So I prefer six inch because I get more area covered faster. Now, five inch, there was some strange belief going around a little while ago. Nick, you can probably expand on this more than I can but that a five inch pad would somehow magically give you more cut than a six inch pad. I just, I I literally heard a podcast with Levi from the rag company and Dylan from another polishing company who no longer works there, but they were just saying how as a detailer, I just love a five inch machine. And all I had on, on the reason I bought my first polisher as a five inch is because they told me that's what most detailers use. So the logic behind it, I have, I have no idea. But that's why I heard people say detailers like five-inch machines. They have a lot of control or cut or whatever. And that's why I bought a five-inch. Yeah. Personally, I prefer a six-inch machine because uh, I can get into places that I can't get into with a five-inch. And this comes back to the, you know, getting a – the need for a three-inch or a one-inch polisher. When you have a six-inch polisher, you don't need those small machines. Uh, so I'll be – doing this front end and you'll be muting me. Okay. But just look how I use the machine to my advantage and I use its size to my advantage. I can get deeper into areas than I could with a three inch polisher. This is almost a situation where you could reach for a rotary. And the reason I like the rotary over the dual action and tight areas, and it's a six inch pad still. I'm gonna put Ivan on mute here. With the rotary, it's that it's that smooth rotation, and you can kind of tilt it ever so slightly to get into all those little nooks and crannies. With the dual action machine, um, you have to have a little more control. Both work exceptionally well, but you know if 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 you were thinking I'm just doing a, qu- a quick enhancement polish, the rotary is excellent uh, for tight spots like this when you have a large pad. Uh, Auto detailing therapy says Nick Ivan, I want to let you both know that you guys keep it simple, practical, and easy, not complicating the process, and helps immensely. Really appreciate that. That's the goal. Uh, Henry Lynch says, is all clean the best to remove dirt? Yeah, you're muted right now, Ivan. I don't know if you, you were trying to say something. Is all clean the best to remove dirt stains from interior plastics? Honestly, no. We recommend rinseless wash. Now, see, Ivan, he's working that tight spot. And you just have to really focus on where you're at. But, yeah. And it's no big deal if you've washed the car and you're getting drips coming out. Like, don't freak out. Um, that's just going to happen <laughs> when you're vibrating the car with any machine. Uh, and it's okay to polish over that. Again, we're teaching a, a damp pad anyway, so that, that's not a, a concern. Is all clean the best bet to remove dirt stains from interior plastics? We like rinseless wash. Like rinseless wash diluted 256 to 1. Dunk your towel in there and then, oh my gosh, just kind of wring it out. That'll clean up interior plastics. If you can't get it out with that or interior clean and protect, then go for all clean at 30 to 1. But always start with rinseless wash first. You'd be surprised at how well it'll clean. Chris says, funny thought. You guys had a build-off of carts. What about a DIY pad washer bucket, LOL? No, I mean, actually, so yeah, we I've been added that section to hang the bucket. Um, oh, but a DIY pad washer. We do have a DIY pad washer, actually. It's in our Detailing 101 series we did a uh, how to clean your pads the DIY way with just a bucket of essentially water with a little bit of rinseless wash in there. You dip the pad in and you kind of work 
the pad in with your fingers, get the rinseless wash in there, but you're not dunking the whole machine in the bucket. You're just getting the pad a little moist into the water. And then you're working it in, massaging it in, and then free spinning it in another bucket. So that's your DIY pad washer, everybody. Okay, everybody. I'm, I'm trying to keep up with all the comments. Uh, stay high energy for everybody. Bill Kurt says, any advice for drying a Jeep Wrangler? My method is to roll around the Jeep for 30 minutes chasing drips. This is followed by... I'm going to unmute you, Ivan. This is followed by uh, groans of frustration 30 minutes later when more drips are evident. Yeah. Ivan, uh, you've got a Jeep. Right. So the best way of drying a Jeep Wrangler is take the doors off, put the top down, and just go for a drive. And then, <laughs> you know, if you wash with rinseless wash, the drips that are left behind after your drive, you can just take a slightly dampened towel and get them all away. Ivan, how well does C6 Hydro Light resist? Hold on. You're in mute. Don't worry. We're going to table this question until Ivan's done. We'll let Franco have the, uh, have the microphone here. Uh, DIY Rinseless 256 to 1 is great for interiors. Uh, Franco buys a gallon of distilled water and then adds half an ounce for ready-to-use detail interior cleaner. Yeah, I have a bottle of you know diluted rinseless wash under my kitchen counter and my bathroom counter uh, just for cleaning. It, months ago later, it still works great. So people ask how long does it last. You can have it in there for months. I don't know if there's a more scientific answer, Ivan. Uh, basically, as long as you've got distilled water, because it's the contaminants that either you're picking up off the vehicle when you're washing or that are actually in your water that will cause a rinseless wash solution or any solution for that matter to go quote unquote bad. And they're not necessarily bad. They just smell funky after a while. So just put distilled water in there. Okay. That's the only time we really recommend you need distilled water for anything. I used to always yeah. use it for everything. Just thinking I'll mitigate against all risk. And Ivan's the guy who's like, you don't need distilled water. You're no. just wasting your money. But if you're going to store a chemical like rinseless diluted for months at a time in a bottle, you recommend distilled. Yeah. Now, you said you tabled the question there. Yes. How well does C6 Hydrolyte resist marring and road salt? What is the safe pH range for chemical resistance? So pH range is 2 to 13, just like the DIY coatings. Uh, the Basically, the DIY coatings and Hydrolyte are very close to each other. The addition of the detonated nanodiamonds uh, basically does almost the same as graphene in a coating in water spot resistance, but also really amps up the hydrophobics. So the, the hydrophobics are simply wild uh, with hydro and hydro light. Uh, we had John from C6 here yesterday, and we did his brother's Audi the week before, and it came in for the, you know, the one week wash. And his brother has owned lots of cars and John has been a detailer for a long time. They were like giddy little kids looking at the, the hydrophobics. Uh, Ryan Loeffler, if you're still here, he can tell you about, we posted a video on the C6 installers group of drying a car with water. And every coating company does that. We've done it before. It's a really nice thing to see. We weren't drying a horizontal or a vertical panel. We were drying a horizontal panel, the trunk lid with water. So it I gives you the I idea. I saw that the clip and, it, and I, I couldn't stop watching it. And I've seen that done a million times. Yeah. It's just a very, very different uh, approach to, you know, uh, hydrophobics. One you've never seen before. And uh, if I have my way, you'll never see again other than C6 and eventually DIY. You know, like I've mentioned before, think of C6 as the Formula One team and Ferrari, you know, of Ferrari and then DIY as Ferrari. So the road going cars always benefit eventually from the, what they learn on the track. Absolutely. Jurban says, I've been using the waterless wash on brand new cars at the dealer. It gets a lot of stuff off the paint and the glass just on its own, including water spots. Thanks for making such a good product. Thank you. Um, yeah. Jeff S. says, what's the best way to remove an old sealant? Say turtle wax, ceramic spray coating. More than six months since last application. Jeff, my advice would be a proper wash, decontamination, um, and a light polish. But with a spray-on product like that, I mean, not calling out or making any comment about another brand, chances are it's probably about gone anyway. But it, anytime anyone's concerned about totally removing a product, I'm not telling them to like go spray on all clean at full strength. None of that craziness. It's like just do a wash, a decon, and a polish if you can. But Ivan, what are your thoughts? 
Same thing. Uh, the only real way to make sure that any product is off the surface is through polishing. Uh, because, you know, sealants. So if we look at a wax, okay. Watch the corner there. Okay, you got it. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm used to a cart this size. Don't worry. Uh, so basically, if you're looking at a wax or a sealant or a ceramic coating, what breaks them down over time is fracturing. If it's fractured, it doesn't mean that the product still isn't there. It just means it's not performing. And that fracturing, think of the desert floor, you know, the, how it cracks after it's wet. That's what fracturing is. And if you have fracturing on your panel, that's that problem you're going to have. And so that wax sealant may still be there, but it's fractured and it's not performing the way it should. Rob Hudson asked, do you cut with the same product as you polish? Yes, we do, Rob. It's called the gold standard polish. It has a very good cut, excellent finish, and it will cut more if you use our wool dual action uh, cutting pad. And uh, it will just be just barely any cut, but just a ton of gloss if you use it on our, you know, red finishing pad, our, our Julian pad. So it's pad dependent, um, which is how we designed it, Ivan. Exactly. Uh, a built hamber question. Love the videos. Very informative. Can I use Corosol, which is a built hamber product with your clay towel? And is Rag Company... <laughs> Hold on. I'm muting Ivan, although I just made him the solo video guy. Oh, there we are. Is that better? All right. I've got you on mute, Ivan. Uh, David says, can I use built camber Corosol with your clay towel and his rag company, Edges 365, to do leveling for the stack? I will never tell you that another iron remover, which I'm guessing that's what you're asking about, um, although I actually don't know. We don't endorse other iron removers with our decon towel because we don't know how they're going to be in terms of lubrication. Uh, Sam Squatch actually commented, we recommend doing a really small section and just seeing, did it leave any marring? How did it feel? But we can't tell you to do that. So if you've got an iron remover product and you want to use it with our decon towel, uh, feel free to test it, but we can't guarantee that it will have proper lubrication uh, because we do tell you that our decon towel doesn't mar the paint if you use our techniques and our products and our processes. So when you introduce a new variable, things can change. So just be aware of that. Rag Company Edges 365 to do leveling for the stack. I'm not super familiar with that. Ivan can kind of give me the, he's giving me the so-so. Oh, hold on. Do you want to go off mute real quick? Yeah. For the initial leveling, it's too thick. Get a pro weave towel to level first. Then you can use that as your insurance towel. Okay. Back on. <laughs> Ivan's muted again. Yeah. So a short nap towel for the first level is how we usually teach it and how we do it in all our videos. And then a thicker one is fine for your insurance wipe. Good questions. All right. McMuffinator says, I know you guys are pushing your products, but whatever brands do you like? Um, whatever brands do you like using the shop? I will tell you, like I've seen Ivan try to solve problems in the shop and I never see him reaching for another product. Like even like, um, adhesive remover, he grabs, you know, our tree sap remover. And like, there's just, I've never seen him need another product outside of our lineup in the shop. Whereas I would typically have had 50 different products back in the day. Um, this system really does work great. The only thing that I might reach for outside of our lineup are some janitorial carpet cleaning products if you're doing really nasty carpets and you're going to get an extractor involved, which we don't really teach hot water extraction at all. Uh, we are working on a carpet product, so stay tuned for that. So that's my honest answer there. Cole says, uh, please do a video on the cart, guys. That looks awesome. Okay, Cole, maybe that should be next on the queue of uh, videos that I edit because we, we shoot like 50 of them at a time when we're in Omaha, and they're all good. We love them all. I don't know which one to do next. So it uh, sounds like the cart is a popular is a request. Um, oh, this is a good question when Ivan's done on the glass. Will there ever be a DIY? Oh, it looks like you're done. Let me unmute you. Will there ever be a DIY or C6 glass coating? What is the expected lifespan of C6 Hydro Light on a windshield? So, yes, we do have glass coatings in the works, uh, both for C6 and for DIY. Uh, the lifespan or, you know, projected lifespan of a glass coating is between one minute and five years. Uh, there is no way of predicting how long it's going to last. There's no way of getting, of giving you a mileage figure because you could live in the UK where it rains a lot and you need your wipers, or you could live in San Diego where it rains four days a, a year. It really depends on use. And that is something we can't control. We can't say that, you know, 
well, if you're in this zip code, you're going to get this. And if you're in this zip code, you'll get this. And if you only drive this number of miles a year, you'll get this, et cetera, et cetera. So we just like to say that try it. If you like it, you might need to reapply again soon, or it might be years before you reapply. And also depends how you use it. Me on the bus, the wipers rarely are ever turned on because we have enough hydrophobics. And, you know, a vehicle like this, same thing. You've got the hydrophobics working for you. If you learn not to use your wipers when you're driving, you'll actually get a better result. There's a, a question about free shipping after spending a certain amount. Our free shipping starts at $150. So that's a question from Go Gators. Yep. Um, Daryl says, perhaps in the future, a video of Nick and Ivan washing their own cars. I think that would be really cool. I just had an idea. Like we could do a split screen with a timer <laughs> and and just that's show unfair. how long I, it takes me. Yeah. yeah, but... Like you'd be done faster. You'd be uh, done maybe, faster. maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. I don't it know. It is a Jeep after all. Yeah. You have mixed feelings about your Jeep, don't you? Oh, they're not mixed in any way, shape, or form. Sylvie likes the Jeep. Let's put it that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Henry Lynch, and that's happy wife, happy life. How do people restore headlights? Uh, so there's a lot of different ways to restore headlights. One of them is simply polishing if they're not that bad. The other would be to get in there with sandpaper and wet sand and polish and clear coat. Others uh, just use PPF. So really it's up to you. Just be, it, be known that a restored headlight is going to last probably as long as a new headlight. So the time you invest in restoring your headlight is worth it. Because uh, if, you, if you were to put a new headlight in, it's going to go yellow eventually too. Remember, your headlight was once new. And it's now yellow. Yeah, it, it, you feel like you have a superpower once you figure out how to restore headlights. I think the best results are going to come from sanding, but you're going to want to tape around the light because the sandpaper can slip. We actually have a couple of videos coming out where we don't sand and we just use a polisher and we get pretty dang good results. And it's just to kind of help people who maybe don't feel comfortable putting sandpaper in their hand. So stay tuned for those videos here on the YouTube channel. Uh, Mosaic says, how big of a section? I'm going to put Ivan on mute. So um, Ivan's on mute here. How big of a section do I polish since I have a palm sander? Well, that's a great question, Mosaic. I happen to have a towel here. And uh, I'm going to put it in front of my screen. I don't know if you can see it. But it's about a 16 by 16 towel. And just like Ivan has there. And that's how we typically teach in terms of a section. So you want to sort of stay within your shoulders. Um, and that's if you're if you're really going after a nice good polishing job. Now Ivan's doing a quick enhancement where he's not going after any defects. So he, you saw him, he was polishing. Ah, you're not, you're not muted. Ivan, yeah. do you want to chime in? Uh, what section was the sizes? Oh, just how big of a section do I polish? I was just saying, yeah, we typically teach a smaller size, but you did that big hood earlier. Right. So it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to do a paint correction, keep it to a small size and do multiple passes. I'm doing two passes and yes, I'm stretching it out because the gold standard can go that far. If you're just starting polishing, keep it to the smaller sections, keep it to the width of your shoulders or that towel size, and you're good to go. What do you recommend to get the scratches behind door handles? I can chime in or, all right. So here's what Ivan's gonna do. He's gonna keep polishing because we do wanna finish this video eventually. One thing we've actually done on video and people said it was a hack, they said it wasn't, whatever. So those marks, those actually, a lot of them are not even scratches. So we took a little tree sap remover and put it on a towel and we wiped. And what visually looked like scratches actually disappeared. So try something like that, an adhesive remover. If you have tree sap remover, great. Lots of people in the comments said they use other things. Use whatever products you've got. But some kind of you know product that typically goes after um, adhesive, something with a solvent in it, our tree sap remover worked very well for that. That's one thing you can do. After that, you could put a bit of polish on a towel and just rub it in with your fingers like that very lightly and, and just be very, very, very like humble in your expectations. Like you're not going for perfection, but you might get like a 50% improvement. It'll look a lot glossier. It'll look really nice. You're not taking off handles. I saw that on a YouTube video and someone asked me, I showed it to him. They're like, do you know how much work and liability is involved in removing a handle off of that Porsche? So you <laughs> just... Be humble with what, and then they also have these little machines with little cone polishers, um, the size of your fingernail. I mean, you could try that too, but just try a little polish on a microfiber towel if you don't have tree sap remover. Uh, we didn't use drying aid when drying the car, correct? No, because we knew we were going to polish. So 
when Ivan washed the car, he washed it with rinseless wash and that has lubricants in it. So technically you don't need a drying aid when you use rinseless wash. You can just go ahead and dry right away. But otherwise he used ceramic gloss. So after he's polishing, he then sprays it with ceramic gloss, rinseless wash, damp a towel first to wipe the polish away. So now you've got a damp panel with rinseless on there. A spray of ceramic gloss and a dry buff is almost like a drying aid, right? After you wash, but this case it's after the polish. So we are using that drying aid protectant at the end. All right, Greg Siebold says, I'm heading to Harbor Freight this week to pick up the Bauer Orbital Handheld. Thanks for the tip. Yeah, I love polishing with a uh, with a palm sander. And again, Ivan's on speed one. Look at that. On speed one, on the mirror. No stalling. That's our 25 millimeter dual action polisher. It works great. Kevin Warren says, if my paint is starting to get that peel look, should I not polish over it? Now, Kevin, that's a really good question. Ivan... Sounds like his clear coat is failing. Should he polish over it? If the clear coat is failing, no, stay away. Uh, I would, you know, get a nice wax and wax it. But other than that, no. Yeah, Ryan L asks, was it repainted? Kevin says no. Ryan says, do a test area, see how it looks. Um, you can, right? I mean, you can do whatever you want yeah. with your paint. But yeah, nice. And, and the next question is, what are your opinions on glazes? And I feel like that would be a perfect candidate for a glaze. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. And Crypto again, you know, oh. glaze like polish and wax are terms that are not, unfortunately, universal across the world. So, yeah, so what is a glaze? Well, a glaze, if we look at it in North American terms, is something that's designed to fill. It has no correction ability whatsoever. It just fills, 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 and is very temporary. Uh, in other parts of the world, a glaze is what we call here a wax. But what we call a wax in North America, some people call a polish. So internationally, detailing can be a little confusing. But as long as we're on the same page of what we're talking about, we can we can get some understanding on that. Uh, Crypto Flyer, same guy about aviation from before. If you drop yeah. the decontamination towel on the ground, does it have to be thrown away or can you rinse and reuse? Rinse and repeat. You can now say detonated nano diamonds without a second thought, Ivan. David Bradshaw comments because you've all your repetition. Yes. Refined detonated nano diamonds. We can <laughs> say that as many times as you'd like. They're not just detonated nano diamonds, they're refined detonated nano diamonds. And yes, there is a big difference between the two. Greg Siebold says great gloss on the hydro light, too. Yeah, uh, great gloss on all the on all the coatings, really. Even, you know. Even though we're releasing the C6 line, the DIY line is still phenomenal. And, you know, we could have done like many companies and just rebottled the DIY coatings, changed the solvent in it so it smelled a little different and said these are our pro coatings. But that's not how we roll. But that's that, unfortunately you know, how a lot of marketing happens in this industry, which you, to uh, you opened my eyes to that. Yeah, which, unfortunately, that is yeah. how a lot of things happen. So... That's how a lot of products are quote unquote created in this industry. I love that we're empowering people to detail their own vehicles. Kevin Warren says he appreciates what we do. He spent way too much on two different details of his vehicle and both times he was disappointed. Uh, but now his vehicle is looking so good. So that's great to hear. Yeah. No. And it's, you know, it's a fun, relaxing hobby detailing you know, yes, it is a profession. I've done it as a profession for over 40 years and I've never felt like I've worked. So it's, you know, it is definitely a great profession, but it's also a phenomenal hobby because you can not only, you know, find something to do that's not costing you an arm and a leg, but the results you get are great as well. I love the look of the, the background of the shop. It gives people a real sense of what it looks like behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, Border says, I hope C6 installers are transparent with their price ranges. I won't bother to shop around if I have to contact for pricing. I'm not sure what that looks no, like. No. So basically, yes, uh, C6 installers, they'll be regionally priced. Uh, and because of the technology, because of the cost of the product, they're definitely not going to be the least expensive coating option in town. I can tell you that. But they'll be the best coating option in town. Boom. Uh, Cornish Maid says, Hi, guys. Would a Marilex pump sprayer have enough pressure to wash off iron remover and also spread quick beads? From Melissa in Cornwall, UK. Uh, yeah. 
uh, you just have to make sure that it's well pumped up and, you know, very, uh, very good in terms of maintaining that pressure. You're actually going to go through a lot more solution than you would if you're using your hose pipe. Would you recommend water though to rinse off the iron remover and spread the quick beads versus a rinseless wash? Uh, water or rinseless. Okay. So rinseless will spread quick beads and that'd be fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Rod Ando says, you're not slowing down, are you, Ivan? Actually, I have to switch headphones because it's beeping at me to say I'm dead. So Okay, we well, switched. that's why we have a dynamic duo here. Rod Ando says, is diamond gloss ceramic coating to all? I can, oh, is, it, is diamond gloss ceramic coating available to all? I can, I'm guessing can't, add it to my cart on the C6 site. So yeah, diamond gloss is not available to consumers. No, it's only available to pro, the pro detailers that are authorized to use C6. Yep, I'm going to mute so you, sir. John, yep, oh, go ahead. So, but John at C6 Ceramics, uh, if you'd like to be authorized, send him an email. I'm going to write that. Hold on. Hold on. I'm mute, I've muted him. I'm going to write this. C6 questions. John at C6Ceramics.com. I'm writing that in the comments. So if anybody's curious, hey, I want to get in touch with that C6 guy. That's not Ivan. To get authorized or to learn more. John's your man. All right, what's up, everybody? Detail Pop saying hello. Would going over paint overspray with a towel ruin it or just rinse it off and keep going? You could do overspray. That's the one time that I tend to recommend people have a clay bar on hand. Try overspray with your decon towel. It might work. Um, it might just take you a very long time. Whereas with the decon um, process, like with a clay bar, yeah, a clay bar is more abrasive. But when it comes to overspray, you know, like a fresh paint job or something, they painted the bumper and there's a bunch of other panels that are full of all those little tiny little rough dots. That's when you might want to reach for a clay bar. Rob Hudson says, okay, great. So how, how often do you polish? D depends on who you ask. You know, Ivan's going to tell you don't polish very often, right? You only have finite clear coat. Um, but if you're polishing with a rotary jeweling pad and it's like once a year, could you get away with it? Sure. But ideally you're not polishing that often. So uh, Ivan can opine on this, but I know you said in the past, you know, you just want to polish the least amount possible. You only have so much clear coat to work with. You want to polish for a purpose, right? Like if you're trying to, you know, prep your paint before a ceramic coating, that's a good time to polish. Or if you've tried a water spot remover, and nothing's coming out and you've had a coated car, you may want to do a light polish with the rotary jeweling pad to remove the water spots, um, but you don't want to recoat after that. So it's such a light cut with a rotary jeweling pad and gold standard polish that it might get those water spots, just shave them off the surface, but it's not going to actually affect the ceramic coating. There's different times to polish again, but you want to polish with purpose and intent the first time and then be very intentional with doing that again on your paint. Uh, Barry Beach says, what do you and Ivan disagree on? Process or future product? I mean, I like extract. Oops. I've got Ivan muted still. I was going to unmute him, but he's... What do we uh, disagree on, Ivan? Extractors? Uh, no, I like, not, a, I like hot water yeah. extraction. Right. <laughs> you know, Nick would extract every car if he could. Uh, that's something I don't... You know, The least water you put into a vehicle, the better it is as far as I'm yeah. concerned. But other than that, no. Uh, product development, you know, we... I do the preliminary groundwork, if I can put it that way. Then we submit it to each other. And, you know, if there's something that needs to be changed, we change it. That's why we're slow at developing products. Um, because we make sure that we're both satisfied with the product, A. B, that we've done all the testing required so that it doesn't show up and the customer goes, well, that's not like it was in your videos. And, or, you know, something happens along the way. We do stability testing. We do long-term testing, uh, you know, in different uh, machines. And also we do a real world testing. So that is why it's taking us so long to develop products. Our wax has been, been in development for four years now. I, uh, we, did, we recently tested it, Ivan, and I was like, I like it. Yeah. But I think it could fill more. And that was where exactly. I sort of, I was like, I like, it looks great, but... And we're back to the drawing more. board. Yeah. So, yeah. so right. back to mute. Back to Mike. Or back to mute Mike. Um, all right. Any tips on removing an old coating via polishing? Yeah. So the way we teach it, Goni, is we don't focus on removing an old coating. We want to abrade the old coating. So instead of worrying about is this fully removed, because you can't really see that with your eye, 
you know, a one-step polish after you've washed and decontaminated, you've abraded the coating with that one-step polish, you've cleaned up the paint, you've got shinier paint as well, so it's a win-win. Uh, then you've abraded the coating, then you'd wipe it down with panel prep after you've done your initial wipe off of the product, and then you'd ceramic coat. So that's how we teach to even think about. Um, you've got an old coating, you wanna add maybe C6 or DIY, what do you do? Well, we teach to polish and not overthink whether it's fully gone. What's the recommended IPA ratio for panel prep? Uh, so we don't, we teach to keep isopropyl alcohol <laughs> in the home, in the kitchen, in the bathroom, whatever. We have a panel prep, a dedicated panel prep. We use that to prep the paint before ceramic coating. Of course, there's now our adhesion promoter polish through C6, which is also something you could use before the DIY uh, coatings. But no, IPA on paint. Oh, hold on. I see Ivan. All right, you're now unmuted. So all clean and rinseless are better panel preps than any IPA could ever be that, but we have our dedicated panel prep, our dedicated panel prep, like Nick was saying, propanol and surfactants. Surfactants are an important part of a panel prep. You need some form of surfactant to break down those oils from the polishing IPA. It's think of it as a detailer's placebo. So back to mute, Nick. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say more. Okay. Back to mute. <laughs> Ivan always has so much to say. And I'm always interested in, in, in how he says it. But yeah, you've heard it from there. Uh, building a relationship with your detail is a good thing. Don't be afraid to talk to them right now. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you had a bad experience with like a detailer or something, like just talk to them, you know, because I, I, it's unfortunate. Someone else wrote they had a couple of bad experiences with the detailer. And that's unfortunate because there's a lot of great detailers out there. Uh, Troy says, if I have peeling clear coat, how would I fix that issue? Can I use a wool pad? That's an aggressive compound. No, Troy, if you have peeling clear coat, your paint has failed. Uh, basically you could put a glaze on it. You could, you could put something that, like a filling wax after you wash it. But the only option going forward is it's going to need to get repainted. So you can wash it. You can put a wax on it. You can even try ceramic gloss, but like that paint quality is you can't restore the, you got to repaint that. Let's see. Ivan's, uh, unmuted now. Yeah. So there's a great way of looking at that. If your paint is, um, you know, failed, there's no way of repairing it other than repainting. Think of it as a pizza. So you've had a pizza in the fridge in the box for a couple of weeks, sort of growing green fuzzies on top, <laughs> putting, a, putting a bit more cheese and putting it back in the oven is not going to make it good again. Same thing with your, you know, your failed clear coat. If you're trying to polish it, put a ceramic coating, or you're going to wipe on clear coat over top of it. It's still failed clear coat underneath. It's just hard for people to like fully accept that if they don't know it yet. Cause they're like, well, there's yeah. gotta be something right. And when you're a detailer and you don't quite know paint like that, like I used to be, I tried polishing it. I tried all kinds of things. My pad turned up, you know, the color of the paint and everything. It was an old single stage. It just, when it's failed, it's failed. And, uh, yeah. unfortunately you're looking at a repaint. Um, Daryl Quinn says, how does DIY rinseless create such an excellent shine? By cleaning the surface. So we call it, you know, uh, rinseless wash and shine. And the reason we say the shine part is because we're actually removing the dirt that's hiding the shine. We're not, it's not leaving anything on the surface. It's not leaving anything behind to create shine. It is just deep cleaning better than just about anything else out there. And it's not leaving anything on the surface. So some soaps will actually leave a little residue and that's why you know, they diminish the shine over time. Uh, also you've got you know, some people will do a pre-soak with a high pH product. That high pH product is doing the same thing. It is leaving something on the surface because the, you know, the, especially the sugar-based ones, try throwing sugary water on your vehicle and getting it off. It's just not happening. Uh, sugar tends to be sticky. So it's one of those things that the less aggressive you are, but you have just enough aggression to do the job, then you're going to be doing a much better job. When will rinseless be back in stock, Ivan? Uh, hopefully tomorrow. Yeah. So we're telling people this week, hopefully by the end of the week for all products, but yeah. like as soon as tomorrow, like we want, we want to sell products too, guys. We don't want them to be out of stock. Like we're very no. excited to resolve all of our warehouse moving issues and behind the scenes, so much work is being done. So we appreciate everyone's patience. Someone but did have ask. A Oh, but one ahead. second. We have a number of spectacular distributors that are there to help you that they have inventory. They do right now. 
Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. I forgot to say that. It's almost as if Ivan is the one who oversees our distributors. Uh, no, that's a great point. And we've, and a lot of them have the polishers in stock ready to ship. Although I've noticed detailed image and car supplies warehouse sold out of the rotary. Did I miss anyone? Um, I'm pretty sure Carzilla and, uh, Carzilla still has inventory. Carzilla is actually the company that bought the most of them. They had a, a good, uh, a good eye for what was going to happen. And, yeah. uh, auto forge also bought a lot of them. So yep. You check might want to check Forge. Auto Forge in Florida. They uh, they should have at least the rotary left because they bought more rotaries than DAs. So. Yep. Uh, Owen Samuel says, Nick, years ago you did a great YouTube video on steaming interiors. Wondering if you or Ivan have suggestions on a great steamer for an intense DIYer. So, Owen, I'm like our friend of the channel, like Eddie Cologne. Like, I like the nice stuff. So, I never bothered to buy like the McCullough steamer for 300 bucks. I just went right to the $1,000 plus steamers, you know? And I think there's some wisdom there in terms of buy nice or buy twice, but I don't know. So I haven't tried the McCullough, right? And like I bought the really nice extractor, but then someone suggested the Bissell Spot Clean Pro was like 150 bucks. And I tried that. And sure, you get what you pay for, but you can still get the job done with these lesser machines that are less expensive. But I use the VX5000 and the Chief Steamer, and I like them both. Ivan, do you have any thoughts on a, a steamer recommendation? I know you say they're not necessary. Well, no, they're, they're a great tool to have, but a lot of people overuse steam. So yes. they're using steam where it's really not necessary. Totally. Uh, but that being said, I did the same as you. I've never had a quote unquote cheap steamer. Uh, I, I went all in with steam, you know, back in the early two thousands when it was like the thing to have. And yeah, 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 yeah. you're not a detailer if you don't have a steamer. So, well, uh, you've and, taught me, you've taught me, Ivan. Grab a rinseless wash, damp, and towel before you grab your all clean on the interior. I used to always yeah. grab such an aggressive thing. I used to grab steam when all I needed was air. All right, I'm going to mute you. Nope. I got unplugged, unplugged somehow. Somehow. But yeah, I mean, you get it. Like, listen to Ivan. Try the least aggressive method first before you pull out the bazooka. You don't always need steam. But when you do, it's great to have a good machine. Yeah. All right. Uh, Krishan asks, how do you correct ceramic coating after noticing high spots a month after application? Is there a way to re-level or do I compound and reapply? No. Oh, uh, there we go. I got it. Okay. Krishan, if you notice a high spot a month after ceramic coating, probably not too bad. I've muted Ivan. Probably just need to polish that area, do a quick wipe down a panel prep and reapply. Um, at least with our coatings. Because they are on there for sure. Um, Parth says there's a potential DIY pad washer in the works. Hey, we're always thinking about someone asked us, Ivan, I know you're polishing. You're like, why don't we try to make a Lake country 4,000 pad washer? We're thinking about all this stuff, right? There are friends over at Lake country, but right now we have the pad washers, Lake country 4,000. We recommend using them. We have our DIY method on how to do this. Uh, just look up detailing 101 pad washing. Uh, DIY detail. That's a long, anyway, we have a whole video where we show you how to use just stuff in your kitchen on how to do a, a pad washer solution. Everclean car care says, is there any use for that? Like instead of doing an enhancement polish to save time, for example, Oh, a glaze in terms of filling. That's what you asked. Um, yeah, there's times where you, you want to fill and your customer wants to fill like filling is not a bad word. I think some detailers think, Oh, if I fill the paint, I'm not a real detailer. I didn't totally hundred percent perfect that polish. No, a quick one-step polish and then a filling glaze or a, or a polish with a glaze in it, whatever you want to do. Like sometimes just filling paint temporarily reducing the appearance of scratches for a few car washes. That's a beautiful thing. So you could definitely make that work for you as a pro, as long as you communicate that to your customer, if that's what they want. Um, absolutely. Uh, rock D says any difference on polishing on a newly painted car? That is a good question. So, Ivan's worked in a body shop. I'm gonna let I'm gonna come back to this question, but fresh paint is definitely different than uh, paint that's been sitting for a while. Uh, Rock D says got into an accident. Part of the fender and bumper was painted. So certainly, when it comes to ceramic coating, I always say talk to your painter. Talk to your painter about how soon you can polish, and how soon they recommend you could put something like a wax or a sealant or a ceramic coating on there. Just talk to them, and they'll have a recommendation. 
Owen wants to know why Ivan hates one inch polishers. So again, we'll we'll table those two questions for later. Um well, a lot of these questions are kind of Ivan questions, but let's just admire what he's doing here with a six inch backing plate, getting into tight spots fearlessly with our 25 millimeter dual action polisher. Emblem polishing, not a problem. Now, there's a rabbit hole to go down here, folks. Y you could do this many different ways. You could use a rotary for this. You could use a tiny polisher, you could use a small little cone polishing, you know, foam pads. But right now, quick enhancement polish this is all you need and uh you'll see this paint is very shiny at the end this would be the perfect amount of you know polishing you'd ever need to do before applying a ceramic coating for example but we're doing a quick polish and then protecting with ceramic gloss a lot of ivan questions is he still polishing okay, okay ivan oh, right. back to mute back to mute folks uh how do you remove oh boy we got we're getting a lot of questions how do you remove orange peel on one stage paint sanding or buffing rotary or da oh my goodness that's a question that i also think is a, is a good ivan question we would never teach to remove orange peel we are diy detail after all but there are times when removing orange peel is a legitimate goal um i'd be curious how old that vehicle is too if it's original paint or a respray. Ivan, how's it going over there? Give me a couple seconds and I'm with you. Okay. Like, I can answer a lot of these questions, but um, the fresh paint question I think is a pretty interesting one. And then the one addressed to you about why you hate one inch polishers is an interesting one. So I don't hate them. I just think they're a waste of your time. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, they do a job and there are certain things that, yeah, you might need it. Uh, so in my shops, we had, every cart had three polishers on it. So every detailer had three polishers. For the shop, we had a three inch polisher and it got really dusty because it was barely ever used because we use six inch pads and six inch pads can get into areas that you can't get in with a five inch pad. Uh, I was able to get into those door handles on this mini with a six inch pad. I'm able to get in all these areas. You saw the front bumper, same deal. I'm able to get into areas that you literally can't get into with a five inch pad or a three inch pad for that matter. Let's talk about polishing newly painted clear coat. So in a body shop, they start polishing as soon as it's out of the booth. They start sanding and polishing. So don't be afraid of it. Everclean Car Care says, Glazes, do you have any clear coat restoration in the works, like the product you had at Optimum for some time? Yes, that is in the works. Roger Mitchell says, is App, which is our adhesion promoter polish, under yep. the C6 banner, will it help on top of PPF? Yes, definitely. You want to use it on every surface. So every surface you're going to be coating, the App is a... A good choice and you can actually use the gold standard on ppf as well it's going to improve your ppf it's you know when using the red jeweling pad you can get in and clean up your ppf dramatically travis harshberger says great information as always guys really like the addition of the app polish should we polish over trim with it what is the most yes. efficient way to use it in a two-step scenario so cut with your 25 millimeter da and wool pad with the gold standard. Wipe that off with a rinse of stamp and towel, and then apply the app and wipe that off with a dry towel. And you're not cleaning, so you're not cleaning the pad in between sections with app, right? No, uh, the, so with the app, you're literally going all the way and your pad when you're done the vehicle is as clean as when you started. Probably one of those you just have to use to understand. Yeah, it's very counterintuitive, especially for me, because I've been telling people to use it, you know, work with damp pads and right. all, you know, clean damp pads for 30 years now. And now all of a sudden I'm telling them, no, 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 use a dry pad. Uh, but yeah, but it does exactly what we say it's going to do. Uh, those who have tried it are, you know, using it on every coating 
they're doing, not just the C6 and DIY coatings. So, uh, Senji's Guzel says, how do you remove orange peel on single stage paint, sanding or buffing rotary or DA? Thank you. So first of all, polishing will not remove orange peel. It will simply remove the whole layer of paint. And so if you want to remove orange peel, you have to start by sanding. Now, the question is, do you actually want to remove the orange peel? Because orange peel is beneficial. Uh, unless it's a show car, I wouldn't be removing orange peel. Yes, sir. Uh, Umberto says something's good about our products. They have very few instructions to follow. So Eddie Cologne can follow. Is he a non-instruction <laughs> reader? Is that what I'm hearing? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> like most detailers. We love yeah. you, Eddie. Goni says, I appreciate the info. Any visual indication to look out for when polishing the old coating, letting me know it's ready for panel prep and new coating? No, uh, just polish. And you're not trying to polish to perfect. You're trying to polish to preserve. So one, you know, a quick pass with the gold standard polish and even the red jeweling pad is going to give you enough bite for the new coating to adhere to the paint and the old coating. Now, you don't necessarily want to remove the old coating. You just want to make the new coating adhere to it. Yep. What's the difference between DIY panel prep and rinseless, according to Rick Smith? So the, the rinseless will somewhat do the job. Uh, it's better than IPA, but the, you know, a dedicated panel prep is a step that don't skimp on it. It's you know, the last step before putting a ceramic coating on You've invested a lot of time to prep the surface. You've invested a lot of time or a lot of money in a coating. And now you're skipping a step that costs you literally less than 50 cents. Yeah. And you're not going to use the whole bottle on your vehicle. No. And you will have that bottle sitting around. There are times when I just like having panel prep around. Like, yeah. Whether I'm just a one timer and I'm just coating my car and I'm like, do I really need this whole bottle? Ivan, you know, I love off label uses for panel prep. Yeah. And Nick, how much is a bottle of panel prep? I don't know. Is it what eighteen ninety nine? I need to look this up. Yeah, I don't I'm think gonna... it's even that much. Okay, I'm gonna feel bad if I don't know the price of our own product. Um, yeah, it's eighteen ninety nine, and it's sold 18 out. Eighteen ninety nine. Yeah, but eighteen ninety nine for something that you're gonna, you know, on average, we use maybe half an ounce to do a car. You've got sixteen ounces in a bottle, so it's costing you less than fifty cents to do a whole car. Yeah. Uh, it's just not worth skimping on. It's, it's one not. of those things that I don't understand why detailers and, you know, we see it on not our Facebook community, but a lot of Facebook communities where they actually get mad at each other and yell, you know, uh, they start writing in capital letters and all sorts of things because I'm, I've been using this panel prep on every coding I've ever done, despite whatever company and it, it's worked. Yes, it's worked. But are you giving the best possible result to your customer? No. If a company has gone to the, you know, the expense, the time to create a panel prep, there's a reason for it. Because they want you to succeed. They, they're trying to give you the best possible result. And detailers are skimping 50 cents on product because, oh, well, I already have a panel prep from another company. No. Mike commented, you can tell Ivan gets frustrated with people not wanting to use a dedicated panel prep. Just as you were saying that, I put the comment up and I'm like, yeah, yeah I hear it. It's true. It's, you know, it would be like you buy a Ferrari, but it's time to get new tires for your Ferrari. Well, instead of getting the new tires that are, you know, the, the same ones that came with the vehicle, because Ferrari engineered the vehicle to work with those tires and all of that. No, you take the wheels and tires off your Honda Civic and put them on your Ferrari. That's what you're doing when you're not using the proper panel prep. You're shortchanging yourself and the customer. Brython Austin says, what happened to the drip catcher? We sold out and we're in the process of reordering from our supplier in Korea. Yep. One of many things that we're working on, but I appreciate that, Brython. Um, Another question from Atlanta from Owen Samuels. Can rinse's wash be used as a windshield washer fluid? If so, what dilution? Yes, Owen, just 256 to 1. And as long as you're in an area that it's not going below freezing. Right, Ivan? Like, we don't yeah. want this freezing in the... No, exactly. Yeah. So if it's summer months or Atlanta, I don't know how hot it gets or cold. I know it's hot there, but 
As long as you're not going below freezing. Sometimes I use it in the summertime if I'm low and I don't feel like going and buying some at the gas yeah, station. And or they don't refill it at the oil change, whatever. Yeah, it's definitely exactly. an option. And what were yours? Um, well, Navi. I just is, have the I just oh, have the wheels and tires to do, and we're done. Oh yeah. Well, I'm just trying to get through all these questions. Navi says, yeah. "When would you consider using a steamer?" There's all kinds of times, Navi. Like nasty cup holders filled with like gum and coffee and stick wrappers and more candy. So really great for cup holders, and and it's really great on like uh, nasty like gas pedals or like rubber floor mats that you just every time you wash them and and they look clean and then you dry them with a leaf blower and then they have that browning everywhere. Sometimes steam feels like the only thing mixed with them all clean that's really gonna get them clean. It's just there's like lots of times like along the floor areas just tight. The interiors get so beat up that steam can often just blast in there and uh kind of be a miracle worker for you but if it's a pretty well-maintained vehicle you don't need steam it's usually like a vehicle that's had a lot of miles or use and abuse before having a steamer umberto says i used hot water with my towel in order to remove stubborn stuff yeah because heat's a principle of chat chat so if you have heat involved you're going to get better cleaning ivan what are you doing over there on the trim with that uh well, even with the ceramic gloss on it, it was looking a little worse for wear. So let's give it a little more life with some tire lotion. Now the tire lotion went along to the paint a little bit, or it looked like it. That's a it's a quick wipe off for folks, just so you know, don't don't freak oh, out. Yeah. yeah, I didn't. Yeah, very good. Here. You're surprised what the camera picks up. Yeah, excellent. But that's something you just catch by the end. You can wipe it off real easy, especially you got the ceramic gloss on there already. It just wiped right off. Um, so someone's asking PF Marzon. I wish there was a detail store in Sacramento that sold DIY detail products. Well, if there's a detail store in Sacramento, ask them to give me a call. Absolutely. Uh, we're available at vital detail supplies in LA, but definitely not Sacramento. Yeah. We're always open to that conversation. Uh, Lou Zibby says, I have a new car. I want to buy all your products to start my personal detailing journey. All your kits have been sold out for a while. Some of your individual items as well. Restock timeline. Uh, so a lot of things are marked out of stock on our website simply because we don't have the inventory numbers correct. So the new warehouse is taking inventory and once they're done taking inventory, a lot of things will magically reappear on the website. Excellent. Uh, Navi asked a good question. When you have to, how to safely clean your headliner? Uh, rinse the stamp and towel bunched up, no pressure and just lightly go over it. And if it doesn't come clean, don't force the issue. It's better to have a little stain on your headliner than it is to have to replace the whole headliner because it's dropping down on your head. Navi asked a question that we already answered. How do you polish inside the door handle? Yep. Um, so check the I use a six, for that. Oh, what I do use, you use a six-inch pad for that. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, check bio says I bought black and Decker buffer polisher, six inch orbital car polisher on Amazon, but it came with three bonnets, one blue, two white wool, which pad is used for which I have a new black car with swirls, throw it away. Uh, yeah, those, don't uh, use that, those bonnets. Yeah. Not a good, not a good idea. We have a system. We have many videos. Please just buy a palm sander from Harbor freight for 20 bucks or Menards and then grab one of our pads, our gold sander polish a bottle of rinseless wash and uh, don't skimp on a couple of towels to wipe it off with. And I think you'll be good, but you don't need the towels. Just I would use a different machine. Yeah. We have a simple system, Ivan. Like it's not that much to invest. Like it's under a hundred dollars to get a pad of polish. Um, right. Like we did like a little video about this for under a yeah. hundred dollars, right? To so polish under a hundred. Yeah. Under a hundred dollars. You can literally have everything you need to polish your paint. Okay. Luzibi says, if I have chrome deleted emblems with Plasti Dip, how would I clean and protect the car? Polish and re-dip after I polish? You just have to be careful not to uh, polish closer on the dip. So dip is actually, you know, a well done Plasti Dip. Sorry, we'll put it in another way. A well executed Plasti Dip actually is a long lasting product and does a good job. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, right. We had our shop truck that was partially plastic dipped and it was on there for what six years at least 
and still look great when we check sold bio. the shop. So yeah, check by so just take just be very gentle when you watch the plastic dip. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And if you're thinking of applying plastic dip, make sure you apply it properly. Uh, you know, the more coats you put on, the easier it's going to be to remove and the longer it's going to last. People try to skimp out and that's, that's one product, Nick, that you would do extremely well with because you're always <laughs> wanting to put more on. Hey, if you know, you know, yeah, more is always better. Right, Evan? In two or three things in life. Yes. But, uh, in detailing products, generally not. No. Uh, Stromberg Stromberg says, are your panel, is your panel prep iso propanol based yes but it also has surfactants and a few other uh key ingredients in it that make it so that it does what we want it to do with our coatings and if you're using our coatings use our panel prep if you're using another brand's coating use their panel prep uh the only exception to that rule i would say is our new app so the adhesion promoter polish uh works with every coating I've tried it with. And we've had a, a number of C6 installers, beta installers, trying it with all sorts of different coatings. And every one of them says they'll never use anything other than app going forward. Well, that's great news. Uh, Christian says, thank you for answering all questions. We make a great team to learn from. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, your thank products you. are very economical as you don't have to overuse. Nick, I used to be very heavy handed as well, but and then it got cut off. But yeah, Maybe it just doesn't show on StreamYard, which is our um, streaming platform. Yeah, I'm I'm learning, uh, Krishan. I, I think I've gotten better, and it it may be something Ivan acknowledges or doesn't. But I yeah, no, you have better yeah, much it. better. Yeah. because I've seen it, right? I've had to actually like watch you do it, have you show me, <laughs> and then it's like, oh yeah, like I used to take all clean straight. <laughs> yeah. To clean things, and then, <clears throat> and then I uh, you know, cause like. I get the product for free. So if sitting in the garage, like I'll just like do a glug on my towel. And then I watched you use it at 15 to one for so long. I was like, okay, fine. I see the beauty. Like it actually works at 15 to one, you know? So I had to come around. I'm a, I'm a hands-on learner. I had to see it to believe it, but less is more in detailing. Listen, Ivan, uh, Umberto says, would the new C6 consumer version be working as a standalone or could it also be stacked like the eight and three years after applying app standalone standalone? There's no need to stack it. Mega says, hi there. Go DIY detail. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Carlos says, Carlos Rivera says, when will we see a car getting DIY wax? There's a video that we shot over the winter that uh, you may We're just waiting to launch the wax. Sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Actually, the video I did last summer, Nick, to give you an idea. So oh, my, that was the I, first one? Yeah, I did a video on my daughter's car. And one of the peculiar things with our wax that I, for me was important was to be able to do it in direct sunlight and let it sit for as long as you want. So our wax, actually you can put it on direct sunlight and let it sit for hours. And it's going to uh, just come off super easy. So it's worth noting that in about an hour and a half, basically working solo, you've washed, <clears throat> polished and protected this vehicle yep. with ease, answering uh, a litany of questions. Samuel says rinseless winter compatible windshield washing fluid. Genius next product. Uh, in the winter, honestly, just get something cheap. Uh, okay. yeah, it's, the, yeah, it's not worth it, unfortunately. Uh, it's been thought of. Different companies have tried it. I tested different ones that different companies have proposed, and it never works out. So. Tyler Crouch says, will you be offering training? I live in Hawaii. What does it take to be an authorized installer of DIY detail? Training, insurance, be an LLC? Uh, well, for DIY products, you can go to Shea's Luxury Detailing or Hawaii Detail Supply, I think. But anyways, it's a division of Shea's Luxury Detailing, and he'll sell you everything you need. And you don't need to be like in to be an installer of our coatings. It's all open to anybody. So yeah, the DIY C6, coatings. Yeah, if it's C6 right. you're talking about, that's a different story. Right. C6, you go to C6Ceramics.com. There's a Become an Installer tab. Follow the link there. See if you marry us. Fill the form oh, and fill the formula, uh, the uh, the uh, the whole thing out. If you leave something unfilled, it's just going to reject it. So. Oh, if, if you had people try to apply and not fill it all out, come on, people. Well, Nick, how are we doing? 
We're doing pretty good. Um, what actually, time is it? I don't know. There's a lot of questions still. I don't know. I'll think let's just let's just fire off these last questions, okay? Yep. Go ahead. Can I use quick beads as a drying aid? I want to use something that's in the same family as the graphene three-year coating. Definitely. Uh, Bronco far Bronco Ram fan Bronco Ram fan. Okay, CSU and Denver Broncos. Got it. Does it matter what I used to live in Fort Collins? Does it matter what palm sander I use? I have a Dewalt one. Perfect. Use it. Okay. Uh, Goni says, when polishing an old coating, would you recommend multiple pads? There's one pad with pad washer, safe enough. Uh, one pad, the pad washer, that's all you need. Goni says, any situations you can think of that would warrant all clean 15 to 1 on the interior? Uh, very, very rarely. Like a disaster detail. Yeah, I'm glad you said you gave some room for that because every once in a while. Yeah. Uh, People asking about pad wa or not pad washer, sorry, little random orville sanders. This one's a little more expensive. I picked it up off Amazon and we'll put a link below later. This thing is the quietest random orville sander I've ever experienced. Is that a marker? No, it's and actually in their description, a lot of people mention the M word and saying that this is actually better than the five hundred dollar M or Merca one they bought. But uh, super quiet. Wow. Is that a Merca knockoff, you think? Uh, it's actually a little different. Yes, it's the same colors, which you know are pretty close to our gold standard colors. But uh, with the app for C6, this is actually the best tool to apply the app. You don't want a long stroke. So eight stroke, eight millimeter stroke maximum with the app. If not, it overworks it. But uh, so I'm testing all sorts of different tools. Of course, we have our, you know, our good old standby uh, Harbor Freight ones here in the cart. But this one is just phenomenal, like super quiet. Uh, this is it at full speed. It, look, it, it looks like it feels smooth. It is. There's no vibration whatsoever. Uh, and it's a six inch pad. Good for me. And a, uh, a five millimeter stroke. So somewhere between the eight and the three, uh, but super quiet, as I said, lightweight, easy to work. So in the description below, after the video is over, I'll go and put a link to that. Elizabeth says, if I'm ceramic coating a new Tesla, do I need to decon and machine polish? I'm concerned as Tesla paint does not have the best reputation. Yeah, you can definitely uh, decon and coat a Tesla. Uh, and and they polish. probably need, yeah. yeah, they probably need it more than anyone else. Uh, no, Tesla paint is, has a reputation of being bad, but in reality, it's not much worse than others. It's just that the Tesla community is very, very active and very vocal and they talk to each other. And when someone sees a defect on a car, they point it out and then everybody else goes and looks. Go look at a Dodge Ram. Find all the defects on it and point it out to other Ram owners and you'll get the same snowball effect. But, all right, we're going to crank out these last yeah. few. Are you still one, active? One second, I'm just, gonna, I'm just going to show the office. Okay, we're doing so the tour as a, promised. A quick tour. Yep, okay. So the office is still uh, you know, a work in progress here. You can see we've got extension cords everywhere because the electrician isn't done. But we oh, have some tables. Desks set up. Yeah, desks. Uh, we have some desks. We have the conference table. Uh, there'll be more desks coming because, you know, if you're looking for a job, you want to move to Omaha and you're a graphic designer, let us know. Uh, and then through there is the washroom. And then the, is there a mirror up, up in the bathroom yet, Ivan? Yeah, the mirror is up in the bathroom. So that's exciting. Yeah. And uh, of course, we have our wash setup that you've seen before. I love that we left the bars on the windows. That's such a cool. Yeah, idea. no. And then back here, uh, our managing partner, this is going to be his sort of his man cave. And when we do trainings, uh, this will be utilized. So there's a lot of things going on here. It's a, a mess at the moment, but. The, it'll be uh, a cool spot that'll be very desirable to like hang out. Yeah. In. Like it'll be like a exactly. fun addition to the DIY experience if we do trainings and bring people in. So you'll enjoy yeah. that. Uh, a, a little secret for now as to what it's right. going to look like. And just inspecting the vehicle, everything's looking great. I don't see any missed areas that I will we see to wipe a, off the polish. Will we see a DIY so, foam cannon from Rick? Uh, probably not. You know, there's a lot of great foam cannons on the market, and it's just diluting a market that's already full of products. Uh, now, we might partner with a company to sell theirs, but uh, having our own branded stuff like that is really, you know, until we get super big. 
So, you know, the day that we're the size of chemical guys, sure, yeah, we'll have our own uh, of everything. But for the moment, we're still a relatively small company. We're growing quickly, but we don't want to overstep our bounds either. All right, we're, we're going rapid fire. Is now the right yeah. time to start a business from Stromberg? Yes. Slayer says, how do you apply interior ceramic to fabric seats? Uh, spray it on a, an applicator, rub it in, or you can spray it on the seat. Be careful of overspray and then rub it in with a brush. And then if you want to apply another layer, wait an hour, let it dry. Half an hour minimum, an hour is good. Okay. Goni says, Ivan, it was great meeting you at Mobile Tech. All the wisdom you shared is appreciated. Look forward to meeting you, Nick. That sounds awesome. I do too. Um, it's always fun meeting in person. So different. Yep. Uh, how to clean jeweling pad when it's on the palm sander from Lee. Uh, basically, you can just touch it to a, if you get a saucer plate, so something you can't put the whole polisher in and get electrocuted, but just something half an inch deep, put a bit of rinseless in there, touch it to there, massage it, spin it out in a bucket. You're good to go. Okay. Raining, raining monkfish. This is the last one. Really enjoyed this content. Much love from the UK. Thank you. And we're at two hours, Ivan. Should we end the stream? Yeah, let's, let's call it a day. Final thoughts about the mini? I know I kept interrupting you with questions. It looks it's great blue. behind you. It's blue. It's polished. It's ready to go. Uh, everything is protected with ceramic gloss. It's decontaminated and uh, they'll be happy to sell it. So if you're All looking right. for a mini, uh, you know, this was live. So uh, um, our Audi of Omaha will have this on the lot actually probably in about an hour. Let us know if you like these live streams. It could be something that we incorporate more regularly. It could, it could be just something we save, you know, maybe they get old after we do them, you know, three times in a week. I don't know, but we don't do them very often. We've done them a lot lately. It tends to be like something that is very rare for us. So if you want more of them, let us know in the comments, right, Ivan? Exactly. And speaking of comments, if you've watched all this way, <laughs> please leave us a comment yeah. below to say that you've watched the whole thing. Uh, yeah. We really, really appreciate the time you spend with us. And if you have any suggestions for videos, leave them below. We love answering your questions. We love acting on your suggestions. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. See you See later. You, Evan.